handling contradictions to our faith. When you are in that valley, when you are in that shadow, when it looks as if the light of God is not getting to you, when it looks as if all the prayers that you have prayed, they are not coming to pass. Somebody say, handling contradictions. Contradictions are logical inconsistencies. In other words, the same thing shouldn't be true and false at the same time. Logical inconsistency. So, it is a contradiction to be born a male and say, I identify as a female. It is a logical inconsistency. Those are circumstances and situations that are not ideally compatible with the life of God that we have. Situations and circumstances that are not compatible with the eternal life that we have received. I will read it this morning. Now, Pastor has been going through this series, Understanding Times and Seasons, right? All right, so I'm going to continue in that line, but I'll give it a subtopic. Amen. Now, um, last week we saw the excerpt. It began to um, say to us that there are some times or some seasons that, that you are walking in the valley of the shadow of death, right? It's a season. And it is the shepherd, the Lord himself, that is with us, even through the valley of the shadow of death. Right. So this morning, we are going to be looking at handling contradictions to our faith. When you are in that valley, when you are in that shadow, when it looks as if the light of God is not getting to you, when it looks as if all the prayers that you have prayed, they are not coming to pass. Somebody say, handling contradictions to our faith. Hallelujah. So what are contradictions? So that, we, I mean, we need to be clear about what we are talking about. If you look at the dictionary, contradictions are logical inconsistencies. In other words, the same thing shouldn't be true and false at the same time. Contradiction. Logical inconsistency. So, it is a contradiction to be born a male and say, I identify as a female. It is a logical inconsistency. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I was joking, I think last week on Facebook, I said, I, I now identify as transparent. <laughs> so, in case I'm preaching, you don't see me again. It's not after. No, it's interesting. <laughs> so, logical inconsistency. Men do not have wombs. So, if, Braffin, you come tomorrow and you say you get belay, that is a logical, it's a what? Contradiction. Uh -huh. Don't come. <laughs> so, we, 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 we now get the meaning of contradiction, right? So, when we say contradictions to our faith, those are circumstances and situations that are not ideally compatible with the life of God that we have. Did you hear me? Situations and circumstances that are not compatible with the eternal life that we have received. Those, those are the things that I'm referring to as contradictions this morning. Amen. When we receive the life of God, it came, it's a, full, it's a full package. You know that. Salvation is a full package. Comes with everything that I need for life and for godliness. But then, as we walk this walk of faith, as we follow the Lord, we discover that we get to a place and uh, he, we, we, we can't see light anymore. What is happening? And then uh, both people will say there is light at the end of the tunnel. And somebody said, why, why put that for the end of the tunnel? Why not put that for front? Right? So you enter the tunnel and it's dark. And you are looking for light. Say, ah. Looks as if God is not there anymore. And I, I, I need witnesses. Maybe I'm talking to myself. It can be in various situations. Diverse situations. And you are wondering... God, I know who, but it's like, show yourself small. Am I making sense this morning? When you are in that kind of situation, what do you do?
one of the things that God promised us is health or healing. But I am sure if you, you've, since you got born again, you've never fallen here. Let me, let me see your hand. Since you got born again, one person, that's interesting. Awesome. Two, in all this crowd. Two. Three. Now, that is an interesting percentage. It's not even up to one percent. But we know in First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, media, if you can put it up, very common scripture. Please stick to NKJV. Thank you. It says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes, what? It didn't even say you are healed. It means that what he has done has been accomplished package delivered to us in salvation. So when I feel symptoms in my body, what do I do? The, maybe the first question is, why am I even feeling the symptom? And that is a contradiction. Am I making sense? That is a contradiction. You know, we might think that eh, maybe when they were in, uh, it is, it is. Let me use. Um, let me say it in English. The word I spot, Abby. That's why, maybe in the Bible times. But if you look at um, Philippians chapter two, from verse twenty-five, that was Paul talking about um, Epaphroditus. This was Paul. Paul. And he began to talk about how he was sick. Let's read it. Yet I consider it necessary to send to you a parabotitos, um, my, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need. No, uh, verse 26. Since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you heard that he was sick. 27. For indeed he was sick almost unto death, but God had mercy on him. Mercy encounter is coming, and God will have mercy on us. But God had mercy on him, and not only him, but also on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. This was Paul. Paul, with the, with the New Testament revelation, had a guy so close to him that was almost going to die. And if you look at the way Paul put it, you will know that he prayed, 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 and look as if nothing happened. It says he was sick almost, on the, but God had mercy on him. What a contradiction! Sick almost unto death, and by his stripes we are what? Let's look at, at another contradiction. This is just laying the foundation. Second Corinthians chapter eight verse nine, common scripture again. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Okay. Now, um, thank God if you are around for second service, you understand what true riches is, right? Now, whether true riches or physical riches, in we know that more often than not, people, <laughs> believers lack these things, right? But see what Jesus has done. Can you ask a neighbor, is there any poor around you? Now you don't, you, ah, no, 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 I don't want to. Jesus said the poor you always have around. I'm wondering, but you did something. Why are you saying the poor was all this up around? Don't let's go into the story of all that one. But do we understand what I'm saying? Again, I'm laying foundation. That's another contradiction. So that is provision versus lack. What Jesus has done versus what you are experiencing sometimes. 
Hello? Am I making sense? Okay, let's look at one more. Um, fruitfulness versus barrenness. It says there shall be no barren among you. In um, Genesis chapter 1, from verse um, 27, God began to speak to the man that he made. This is the original design of God. God created them in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Male and female. Very clear. All right. So, verse uh, verse 28. Then God blessed them and God said to them. Can we do it together? That's fine. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. Have dominion. But when I look around sometimes, maybe in this particular issue, it looks as if there is no fruitfulness here. For some people, it's the career. For some people, it's business. For some people, it's marriage. For some people, it's, you know, children. For some people, but you, you, you get what I'm trying to say. God spoke and blessed man. Original design. Say, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Kaya. So when I am in these situations, when I'm in that valley, what do I do? There is a disposition to have. There is a mindset to have. Or else, that light that is at the end of the tunnel, when you get there, (laughs) it won't be any light. I'm just kidding. You know. But there is a disposition to have when you are in the valley of the shadow of death. It is in this situation many times that people give up on God. Uh, six years, seven years, eight years, I've been waiting for God. No child. Then you go to another list. And they help you concord one child. That will be your nemesis. I've been waiting for God. I'm 42, I'm not yet married. Amen. It is in this, so it's important for us to know how to undo it when we are in that situation. What should be our disposition? Hallelujah. Looks as if for months upon month, year upon year, you have been battling this sickness. And you have done all you think you know how to do. Hallelujah. What should be our disposition? I'm just going to give us three. Before I give us that, let's look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians 11 from verse 24. This was from verse 24. This was Apostle Paul. It's it's part of... um, the whole discourse, but I just took that out just to show something. Say, from the Jews five times, I received 40 stripes minus one. Next verse. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've been in the deep. Next verse. In journeys often, in perils of water, Pays of robbers, it went on and on, on and on. In Paris, among false brethren, verse 27. In weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings often, in cold and in nakedness. We would think that this person is, wasn't born again, Abby. That the, this person didn't have the life of God. You see, one of the reasons why I believe the Holy Spirit is allowing me to bring this word to us this morning is that somehow by the message, let me put it well so that you don't get me wrong, by the, by the, um, um, 
by the wrong manner that the church has taught the prosperity message, we have built up Christians that have no roots, that, can, that cannot just withstand a day of storm. And so, small thing is happening. What is the problem? We have taught Christians to assume that when anything is contrary, it probably means God is not there. Who told you? Am I making sense? When God, when Jesus told the disciples, let's cross over to the other side. Hmm? In that word was the actualization of that journey. And it was with them in the boat. But the storm did not respect that Jesus was there. Hallelujah. So who has taught us that, uh, you know, there are different dimensions. Some people say, ah, maybe because you have sinned. It is possible, but let the Holy Spirit tell you. You can't assume it. Sometimes you have not done anything. You are actually just walking on the path that God has told you. Let's go over to the other side. And then the Bible says the wind was brushed uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. And everything scattered. You know, and of course, you know, you know the story. But did they get to the other side? So in those kind of situations, what should be our disposition? Hallelujah. Number one, stick to the word. Tell them, say stick to the word. Stick to the promise. Stick to the prophecy. Are you following? Jesus already said, let us go over to the other side. If you know who Jesus is, our firstborn, if you knew he was, if he says, let's get to the other side, it does not matter how much the storm that you meet on the way. So the first disposition that we need in the valley, when the storm arises, that stick to the word. Somebody says, stick to the word. What has God told you? There's something I, I, I used to say, I've been saying it for a long time. All I need is to find the word though. Afikema saw, I, I tell God that, except you did not say it. Tebati sokwene. Kayabayabaya. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is. The word of God is yea and amen. So when he has spoken a word to you, it does not matter what rises up. <laughs> hey. So I will stick to the word. Doesn't matter what I see. Doesn't matter what I'm feeling in my body. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what, what's looking like in my, at my workplace. I will stick to the word. I'll stick to the word. Yeah. I feel like singing, Pastor Man is you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the we understand that the words were made by the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter the situation that you are in. You can recreate it by the word of God. By faith, we understand that the words were made by the word of God. So that the things that appear, hey, were not made of things which are visible. Let me quickly explain this to you. The things that are visible are created by things that are not seen. Let me put it another way. The spiritual controls the physical. So when you know where you stand, 
in the spirit. Were you in for service? When Pastor Mary began to talk about our standing, you know that it does not matter what is happening in the physical. As long as, as I stick to the word, the physical must eventually conform to the spiritual. So the question is, what has God said to you? The word of God is unseen, but the Bible says it creates the sin. Am I making sense? Hallelujah. Number two, do not allow the contradictions to define you. Don't let it come out of your mouth. Don't say, I'm a barren woman. I am poor. You I'm a poor. I don't need to have a uh, shy. When you understand what Pastor Joshua preached in second service, you will understand that you don't need physical cash. Mrs. Adisa, should I preach to them? Should I tell them the power in preservation? If I sit you down and tell you about my family, it will shock you. So many people think that, ah, Captain D, ah, he always has plenty of raw cash. No, I was telling my mom, I went to Ibadan, and we're just just, I said, this is the way it works. When there is a need, supply will show up. I don't have plenty of money in my account, though. I want to borrow money, I can't borrow you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Even if I wanted to, I can't. You are laughing. I'm serious. But we've learned. Kaya Rabaya. Kaya Tabako Salia Makata. Listen, hey, my heart is indicting a good matter. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You see, I'm just seeing all the possibilities and I'm wondering why will I define myself by the physical things that are happening? So because rain beats you this morning now, nah, God will not hear what again. Eh? I've been asking you for a car since, since two years ago. Uh -huh. And some of us will now, because of that, are not coming to church. I'm not. Some people, you are watching me now, you are at home. You didn't come because of the rain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yay. When we got married, you know, I told the Holy Spirit to bring examples to my mind, so it's bringing it. When we got married, so the day we got married, we got a car. I mean, was it the day? We shall, we shall go cash out. Okay, I think it was Sunday after, sorry. It was Sunday after. Then some few weeks, I think we had a vigil. I can't remember where Mojidi, we had a vigil. And it was raining. And the car was bad. It was raining, it was in the night. I was living in Nogba. And it, it made sense not to go. Because it was heavy and the car was not available. You know, I told my wife, I said, uh, I know that devil works, started Gini. I said, if we didn't have a car before, what was going to be our decision? So because somehow you've been comfortable and now the car is not there, and then it's raining, you know, oh, big boy, Abby. I said, let's go. You, you want me to not say the rain stopped? It did not stop, it beat us, we went. Don't let these things define you. Don't let any contract. It doesn't matter. Somebody says it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. My time is flying. Oh, ah, who borrowed it? Hey. It doesn't matter. I'm not even reading the scripture of what I'm saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, let's read one scripture here. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 to 18. It says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Hey. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, see what the Bible called it. Anything you are going to says a light affliction. Put it in its place. Uh, no matter what, you've lost two people. Uh, put it in its place. You know, I was telling the Holy Spirit when I lost my dad. I said, You did not even allow me to pray. Ah, sap, sap, pa, 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 excuse me, pa, pa, you don't die. Ah! You know what the Holy Spirit told me? He said, Who will answer the prayer? He didn't sin on me. You see, when you go to some place, the Holy Spirit will not be answering you. Nice, nice answer. I say, oh, sorry. At some point, he won't answer you. That's really what he said. <laughs> for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You know why it's for a moment? Because no matter how long you think it is, it is insignificant in the light of eternity. Yeah. Insignificant. For a moment, it's working for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Kayabakatabaya. The next verse. This is what I've been trying to teach us. Why we look not on the things that are seen. If you can see it, know that you can walk. Hey! But the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. Whether they are good or bad. You didn't, you didn't get that. <laughs> whether they are good or bad, they are temporal. But there is a true riches. So, hey! The things that are seen are temporal. For the things that are not seen are eternal. Not subject to destruction. That is where our treasure should be. Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. He said, lay up treasure where moths cannot destroy. So whatever we have here is, I'm talking about the good things. The, as good as they are, they are for a moment. Don't, don't let that one also define you. I need to end. Number three. The third disposition we need to have is to always take eternity into consideration. Everything is not now, 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 now. Amen. Mm. Matthew chapter six. Somebody should hold that time. Like Joshua held there. <laughs> From verse 31 to 33. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He knows. He said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Okay, I don't have a child. I'm seeking the kingdom. If I had time, I, I will not show you <laughs> the wisdom of seeking the kingdom first as the other things will be added. But the moment you start seeking the other things, you will lose the kingdom. You know why? The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. So serve God. Let him supply all other things always have this disposition. It does not matter how good or bad it looks. Have eternity put into consideration. Every, everything, good, bad, okay. 102, you die. You still don't die. Have you? You still die. If Jesus tarries, and eternity is not one day. So I shouldn't live as though the rest of my life is this physical realm. Hey! Father, we give you praise. 
Romans chapter 8 as we close. This is why we don't fret. Romans 8 from verse 28. Let's just shorten it. And we know that all things work together. Brothers and sisters, whether it looks good or bad, all things, except you don't believe the scripture. So if you believe the scripture, just look at me. If you don't believe, you can look at the back. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Next verse. For whom he foreknew, ah, I don't have time to preach, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Look at verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, this he called, are you the called? Whom he called, he also justified. Are you even justified? Whom he justified, see what he did. They don't burn whatever that situation is. This is your end. Glory. Let's rest our feet. Whom he justified, he also glorified. It does not matter what I'm feeling right now. Hey! See, you can look at the table and say, Unto, I know my end. And there is nothing you can do about that end. You didn't hear me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Can you lift up your hands? I just say, Father, I thank you. Because you are with me always. Even in the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Have you been blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to implore you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously. He has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now. And I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.